Hello and welcome back to Repverb. On this video of a set of KLH model 331 loudspeakers from around 1980. I'm going to be giving them a once over which will include a quick test, main speaker comb rubber foam replacement, retexture coat for the front face, filling the damage on the wood and recovering with a wood finished material. Now KLH as a brand is not as well known as some manufacturers but they're definitely worth saving so let's get to it. That's just a quick test done there and no issues. I have had the speakers playing longer and they seem absolutely fine. So let's get straight into strip down. So the first thing we need to do is remove the speakers from the unit. So there's four screws that hold the grill over the small speaker and then there's four small screws again underneath holding the speaker into the box. So the ones that hold the grill in are just normal cross heads and then the ones that hold the small little tweeter in place our flathead screwdrivers uh, also it is a hex head. I think it must be about an eight mil or something like that. So now on to removing the main speaker from the unit. This is just four cross head screws. Once they're removed, it can then be lifted out and then the cables can be then removed from the back of the speaker. So the first thing I'm gonna do repair wise is this small little bracket on the back these little connections should be located in the bracket so they should be sitting on the back of the box and not hanging out so they've just been pulled out at some point so I'm going to try and bend back the small little tabs on the back of them and then locate it back into the little plastic trim and then screw it back into the box so I'm just now going over the pliers and just bending those little tabs back straight so I can get it back into place and then when they're located back in the right place you can then bend them over So you can see they just push into the little trim and once you've got them through the trim there's the little tabs that just need bending over obviously they're not a sort of a strong design so any sort of pulling with the cable um, tends to pull these out as you can see it's obviously fast forwarded and I've just done the other side exactly the same as did that one and now screwing it back into place so now moving on to the main sort of repair that needs to be done on the speakers is the foam for the cone so this is just all gone sort of mushy um, you'll see in a minute when I get it all together it's just like a almost like a started to go gooey um, so that just needs picking out just carefully obviously don't want to do any damage and then just going around with a screwdriver prising in between the large foam around the edges and just separating it just taking care to go around there you don't really want to damage any of the foam if possible it just makes it harder when you come to glue it back down so now that's off you now need to go around and clean up as much as you can off of the cone and off of the actual speaker surround metal casing And then once that's done, it's now ready to go on to the next stage. Obviously, first of all, I'm just going to give it a clean up, but you can see it's just almost like oh, it's not sort of gooey yet, but it's um, yeah, it's getting to that point where it's starting to go sort of. Oh, I can't really explain it. Almost like gummy. So on this, I thought I'd give it a little go and see if I can pull this center part out with Hoover, and actually, it worked really well because it's almost like a meshy sort of center cover piece um, for the dust cover. It worked quite well, it didn't sort of pull it too hard, it just got it out enough and as you can see it's popped out, it's pretty good. It saves me trying to sort of pick it out with anything or replacing it. So now all I'm going to do is get some spray aerosol adhesive, spray it into the cap and then just go around with the end of the brush, um, not the brush end, the other end, and just go around the new foam, the rubber foam piece that I've got. So I've got to go all the way around with this and then again doing it on the actual metal casing and on the actual cone itself. It's best to apply it to both sides if possible because then it gives it a better adhesion. So 
So now that part's done, now we're ready to put the foam in place. So with this, you don't want to apply any sort of pressure to start with, just in case it isn't in the right location. So you do need to sort of maneuver it around, get it in the right place before you do any sort of pressure around the edges because the glue will stick quite quickly uh, if you press it down too hard. So I'm just using the old mark as a sort of guide. The foam that I bought for this actually is pretty much about the right size around those edges. So it pretty much covers all the marks off the old foam, which is good. Obviously, you don't really want to see that. Um, so I'm just using that as a template and then going around and making sure that I've got it level. Obviously, in between, I keep checking to make sure that it's moving OK and there's no rubbing. Obviously, if you put it off center or it's pulling one way, the center voice coil will rub which you don't want, it won't work properly. So you need to make sure that it's located evenly. There's no sort of stress um, on the foam anywhere, pulling it in any direction. Now with this speaker cone, it's almost like a bluey color. Now I'm not sure if that's original. When I've looked at sort of uh, pictures on the internet that I could find of these speakers, most of them look bluey. Whether they've just faded or whether they were like that originally, I don't know. Um, if you do know, please leave a comment just to sort of say it would be useful information in the future if I ever do them again, whether I need to sort of dye them like I have done with previous speakers. So as you can see, that's the foam now all done. And I've sort of pressed in around, made sure it's adhering properly. And now I'm just going to clean up these thick foam pieces that go around the edge of the speaker, the trims, and then apply the glue again to the speaker and also to those foams. Just carefully going around the edges. Obviously, I don't want to get any of this glue on the cone. Again, just spraying it in the cap and using the end of the brush just makes it easier so it doesn't go over. If you tried to spray glue it on, it'd be an absolute nightmare. It'd be everywhere. And just locating the foams in place. Again, I don't want to put any pressure on them to start with. Just want to lay them down, make sure they've got them all central, and then I can start applying pressure and then obviously the glue will uh, set over time. It doesn't take too long. Pretty much the next day, it'll be pretty solid. And now I'm getting the box ready so I can fill the edges, any bits of damaged laminate and any of the wood. Just going around with that, just trimming some of the rough bits off first before I put any filler in it. And now I've just got some normal sort of body repair filler, which I'm gonna go around and just fill in any of the small bits of damage on the wood. Now with the big piece here that I'm doing at the moment, the filler was a little bit runny. So what I had to actually do, as you'll see, I put a little bit in there, but what I did is when it was just setting, and it was going a bit thicker, I then wiped it in and made sure that it sort of filled with the edge properly without any sort of gaps. The only problem is when it's runny, all it wants to do is just droop down. And it's not filling it properly. Also on these speakers, I have only got one grill for it. So I'm going to fill in the old grill hole um, where the little securing, almost like Velcro parts, which hold the grill onto the front of the speakers, they're screwed in place. So I'm going to remove the screws, move those little parts and then fill them in and then retexture the front. Um, I could try and find another grill or possibly make one, but I just thought it'd look nice. They look pretty good anyway, these speakers without any grills on. So I'm just going to do it like that and just tidy it at the front. As you can see here, I'm just putting a texture spray on and just using the heat gun to accelerate it in between coats, make sure it dries quicker. Now I'm just going over some panel wipe just to wipe off any of the sort of dirt and grime and any grease or anything like that around the edges before I try to spray any the edges with the aerosol black that I'm going to use in a minute. So I'm just using a satin black, just going around, just going around the edges, just being careful. I don't want to spray it over everything. I don't want to get it over all the bits, the screw terminals and the sticker on the back. I'm just going around the edges uh, where the filler is, just spraying all those parts. I'm only doing that just to sort of make sure that when I put the vinyl covering over the top of it, it sticks better. If it was just bare filler, it might not stick so well. So this is the vinyl covering, which is just a wood effect that I'm going to fit onto these speakers. So it's not the same finish as what was on there originally, but I do like this sort of walnut look to it. So that's why I'm fitting it on there. Just getting it pre-trimmed before I fit it and then I can lay it on. So I'm fitting it up against the back edge, putting the straight on there and then pulling it over to the front. And you can see then that I'm just making sure that it's laid flat and then going around sort of trimming any edges. 
and folding it in. Now doing anything like this, I've done it quite a few times, things like this, so I sort of know the process involved in doing it. Um, I'm not saying it's the best process, but it achieves the finish that I want. It's always a bit of trial and error. If you've never done it before, it's a case of sort of having a go. Sometimes you'll mess it up, but if you've got enough film, you can just give it another go. I mean, I messed one of the pieces up on here, one of the side pieces, and I had to do it again. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes these things don't go right. You just don't get stressed with it and just give it another go. So I'm just going around trimming the edges here, as you can see, making it a little bit more tidier, ready for the next piece to go on. So this is sort of fast forwarded. I've just done the other end now and I'm just going around just trimming it into the front of the box. So I've sort of wrapped the edges of the top and the bottom piece, they wrap over to the sides. And then what I'll do is I'll overlap the side pieces slightly and then that will sort of hold it in place and you won't have any corner edges, any bits where it's joined that it might lift. So you can see I'm just doing the side piece now, as I say, lifting it sort of over the edges and then you can just flatten it out over the front face. And again, just going around trimming it. So I did actually trim the corner piece a little bit wrong there, but I get away with it. Once it's all stuck down, you don't notice it, it's, it's fine. I'm just using the tool to make sure that it's in that edge, nice and tight, and the screwdriver to get right in the corners. Obviously you don't want to be pushing it too hard with the screwdriver that you puncture it through, but just enough to tuck it in. So you can see it's starting to come together now. Now I'm onto the other side, and exactly the same process. Just going through, trimming it all round with the overlap pieces so you don't see any sort of edges where it joins. So when I tested these speakers at the beginning of the video, I obviously did a short test, um, but I've actually been using them for a little while just to make sure they're all okay and they are sort of no issues, which there isn't. Now I was thinking about changing the capacitors inside, but as they sound okay and there's no sort of distortion issues, then I didn't really think it was worth doing it. I'd rather leave it and then if it does produce anything then I can then change it. But I did sort of visually have a look inside, there's no sort of leaking capacitors or anything like that so they, they all appear fine and I'm just going to leave them as is for the moment and just do this sort of aesthetics overhaul or refurb or whatever you like to call it. So as you can see now I'm just putting the speakers back in, connecting them back up, making sure they're connected to the right terminals. So again, it's just four Phillips screws or crosshead screws, which secure this main speaker into the box. And then the small tweeter has four flathead screws holding the actual speaker in, and then the four crosshead screws, which hold the grill in place. As you can see, they're almost completed. They look great. Obviously, I'm not gonna show the process for the other one, but it's exactly the same as this one. So we'll do a quick short demo of them working, and then that'll be it, all completed. So as you can see from that quick demo of them back together, all working as they should, no issues. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Obviously, you know, it's not 100% original looking, but now they'll go on for a lot longer. They're ready to go, ready to be used with a nice system and take pride of place somewhere in someone's home. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.